everyone queens welcome to today's video and if today's your first time joining us thank you and don't forget to hit the subscribe button today we have um, the amiable ceo of posh secrets anita iron Chin. so this is over to her could you mind to introduce yourself ma'am my name is anita Yanichi. i'm a mother of four amazing children a boy and three girls and a geology graduate of the University of Calabar, and I'm the CEO of Posh Secret Lingerie, where we um, have in store female items from lingerie and exclusive evening dresses. Fantastic. Okay, so the next question that I have for you is, how did you go into this female clothing business? So I started from my home. It started with my friends, actually. And each time I travel, they are like, oh, Anita, you know how to pick these things. Can you please help me with these items? Can you bring it? And I started bringing it in. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, I'm bringing it this. And my friend seems to like it. Why didn't I turn it into a business? How long ago was this? Oh, this was in, in 2015. Almost 10 years. After you began sourcing these items for your friends mm -hmm. and you decided to turn it into a business, what was the first thing you did in trying to turn this hobby of yours into a business? Hmm. Okay, so the first thing I did was I started with my car. Is that okay. the question? I started putting things in my car. After dropping my children from school, I take it to places, I take it to the bank, I take it to some of my friends for them to sort or to see what I had and we started from there. Okay, so that means to me that you started with what you have and with family and friends. Sure. That was your first step. So what was your very next step in trying to grow um, this business? The money started coming in. I started reinvesting the money back into the business. I bring in things from UK. I made a place out from my home as a store. And I started displaying and I started taking pictures. I post them for other people everywhere. Then it was Facebook platform and um, there was this phone then, Blackberry. And the money kept growing. Under the pace of two years, I was able to move from a smaller space to a bigger store. That is now our present location right now. Fantastic. Um, so the next question I have for you would be, um, you've talked about the growth. Uh, we've heard you talk about the fact that you were reinvesting whatever money you were making in this business. So what were the challenges, if any, were there any challenges, you know, that you faced in growing this business? And if there is, could you, do you mind to share with us today? Yeah, there were challenges. Um, uh, I was having problems with staffing. Um, I wasn't too good with accounting for my stock. I, was, I didn't know how to take stock. I didn't know how to take inventory. So all I knew was, it was like, uh, at first, it was like I was running an hobby. So you see me travel out, bring in things. I sell, oh yes, I've made some figures, but I wasn't really sure what I was putting in and what I was getting, but the business was growing. So I was able to pay for the rent from out of the business. I was able to, there was a time I actually gave myself a treat and I got myself a piece of land from the business. Then staffing was one of the major problem I had because most times the client comes in and they try playing a fast one maybe giving out their own personal account number for an item to be paid into. Oh, wow. So uh, if I hear you correctly, and in my own words, what you're saying is that there was some pilfering happening with the staffing. So there weren't people that maybe you could really trust, trust in yeah. terms of financing. You shared your staffing challenge with us. And while you were telling your story, you told us how you moved from home to the smallest store, to the bigger store and then to your present location. Uh, so my next question would be, what necessitated those moves? And at what point did you know it's time um, to move? I changed my location because um, at some point, business became very slow, very slow. In a month, you can't even record a tangible sales. I started getting depressed. I didn't understand what was happening. Could it be, I mean, I couldn't even understand what next to do. The other option was either I close down or I change my location. So if I hear you correctly, you know, what you're saying is that at this time you had two options. One option was either to give up on the business and your dream or to continue pursuing this thing that you had done over the years. I mean, something that was as rewarding as, you know, helping you buy a plot of land, my goodness, you know, you know, buying some piece of real estate right there. And you, you know, you chose the option to continue. And to continue was um, either you change location or just change tactics generally. So you had to do your research, if I heard you correctly. Okay, so um, 
why did you stay in the same line of business and change location as opposed to thinking of changing your line of business? What was it? What was your driving force? I was used to offering services to women. What else could I have done again? I'm not into real estate. I'm not into office work. I think deep about it and I was like, I had to either close down or push and get better in this business. So it's just a clear case of it's either I succeed or I succeed. I would always say that giving up is an option. But do you really want to quit at this time? Or do you want to keep pushing for your dreams? Okay, so the next question, you know, how does running your own business make you feel? Running my own business, actually, I love it because of the time it gives me my own time. I run things at my own time. I have time for my kids. I have time to run my home. I do things at my own time. I travel at my own time. I don't need to apply to anyone. I'm traveling. I have my own time. I do things at my own time. That alone is my own kind of fulfillment. Fantastic. So in essence, what you're saying is that um, the fulfillment you get from running your own business is time freedom. And honestly, I don't know that you can put uh, money on that. What advice do you have for any aspiring entrepreneur listening to us today? Hmm. What advice do I have? Don't give up. Keep pushing. It's not easy. The line is never smooth. Just don't give up. Keep pushing. It's not easy, but I kept pushing and trusting it to be better. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Anita Yanichi, CEO of Posh Secrets, a female clothing retail store, for joining us on today's episode and for educating my audience. Thank you, Premium Queens, for joining us today. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and set the notification so that you don't miss any of these videos. Until next time, when I see you, remember that your dreams are valid.